By now we've seen that there's this three stage processing model of memory to help us kind of understand memory from a psychological or cognitive processing perspective. What I wanna focus on here is step three, retrieval. And the idea behind retrieval is that in my long-term memory, I have a th you know, theoretically unlimited amounts of information in there. I can store as much as I possibly want, but that information is kind of useless unless I can get it out. You know, like think about, um, you know, taking an exam, for example. It wouldn't be all that fun if you had a lot of great information up in your mind and you couldn't retrieve it when you needed to solve, you know, what is the correct answer on my psychology exam. All right, so what I wanna talk about here are retrieval cues. In other words, what actually brings about memory? Memory is prompted by something in our environment, typically. So external cues activate associations that help us retrieve memories. You know, so for example, when you see your friend's face, that might actually retrieve the memory of their name. So that's what we're talking about here. There are things around us that prompt memories. Those are called retrieval cues. And these can be conscious or unconscious. And what I wanna focus on here is just a, a few examples of retrieval cues, just to kind of look at uh, you know, the diverse array that are, you know, that are all around us. So the first is priming. And this is more of a subconscious retrieval cue. The activation of particular associations in memory, often unconsciously. So imagine you are driving on a road trip and um, you, know, you see a billboard, you know, lots of billboards. You're, you're, you're on the, uh, the freeway driving out to Nevada or something like that. And so every half mile or so, you just see billboard after billboard after billboard. And one of those happened to be for um, a fast food restaurant, maybe McDonald's. But at the time, you weren't very hungry. And so you didn't even think about it at a conscious level. You were just driving and maybe you saw that information in your peripheral vision. But then a few hours go by and you start to feel hungry. And your friend says, hey, we should get some food. Where do you wanna go? And then you might say, you know what? McDonald's kinda of sounds good. I don't know why, but for me, McDonald's sounds kinda of good. What might be going on here is that earlier information primed you. In other words, it activated an association of McDonald's and it was, re, um, it was retrieved when your friend says, you know, where do you wanna go for food? So priming is the idea that we don't always have to be aware of the environmental in, um, inf information that actually activates a memory. But many times we are aware. So let's look at some others that are more at a conscious level. Context, context dependent memory. Context refers to um, the environment that you're in. And what researchers have shown is that uh, the, uh, the environment that we are in when we learn something, if that is the same environment we are in when we are trying to retrieve something, the likelihood of retrieval increases. All right, so we can actually use that to help us study for exams. If you take exams um, in a classroom, you want to be studying for that exam in an environment that is as similar to that classroom as possible. Now, on the other hand, let's say you study at Starbucks. That might not be doing yourself a good, you know, doing yourself any favors because Starbucks is loud, it's busy. And so the idea is that when you're in that loud and busy environment, your brain is activated in certain ways and those, act, those ways will not be activated when you're taking the test. And so our, you know, our, our, our nervous system is a bunch of networks and connections. We want the connections that were activated when we learned information to be the same as when we are trying to retrieve information. And believe it or not, there is research evidence to back this up. So in one study, people were asked to memorize a list of words. And they, asked, uh, they were asked to memorize these words either underwater or on land, you know, totally dry. And what they found was that when they were asked to remember those words, people did better if they were in the environment that they were originally in when they learned the words to begin with. The underwater group, they retrieved more words if they were doing so underwater. And the people who were on land, they retrieved more words if they were asked to retrieve them when they were on land, just like they were when they learned those words. 
Context matters. All right, state-dependent memory. State is referring to things like mood or behavior state. So for example, uh, if you learn something when you are kind of in a sad state of mind, sort of in a depressed state of mind, you're activating different uh, neural networks compared to when you're happy. And so arguably, you'd be, um, you'd be better able to retrieve that information if you are in, a, again, a sad and depressed state of mind. To kind of test this from a research perspective, researchers asked people to memorize a list of words while chewing gum. And what the researchers found was that the participants in this study were better at retrieving words. They remembered more words if they were again chewing gum. So if, you, you know, if you're in that state of mind of chewing gum while you're learning something, you, you want to be in that state of mind again when you're trying to retrieve that information. Right, how about one more? The serial position effect. And what this suggests is that the order of information, the way that the uh, information is presented to us in terms of order, you know, first, second, third, fourth, etc., that changes the likelihood of retrieving information. Specifically, in a list of information, we are better able to retrieve information that is presented first and presented last. And the information in the middle kind of gets lost. You know, it's not as um, easy to retrieve. So you could argue that the information that's presented first benefits from rehearsal. You know, we get to think about it more. And the information that's presented last benefits from a recency effect. You know, it's the thing that's most fresh in my mind. Everything else in the middle kind of gets, you know, lost. Uh, for this reason, um, a lot of people like think about um, political candidates when they're having a debate. They might, um, you know, be benefited by speaking first or speaking last. And the candidates that speak, you know, and somewhere in the middle might not receive as many votes because their information is not as easily retrieved in our cognitive processing systems. All right, so there you have it, some retrieval cues. Again, the idea being that our long-term memory is filled with a ton of information, but we actually need something in the environment to prompt us or cue us to actually activate that memory.